Hey Clash with Super Archer got a new level on Town of 15. We have already seen from a couple of pro teams actually, like Queen Walkers for example, that Super Archers are a big threat to any base. Especially the combination of Titans and Super Archers are incredible, incredible big threat to any base. And in this video I will show you exactly how to utilize that. But before, as always, there's the offers in the game. And if you're thinking about buying any of those, that's the important thing. If you're thinking about buying something anyways then make sure to use the credit code it supports us a lot it's it's really a big support and if you like the content on my channel well for feel free, free to use the code itsu really appreciate that but now let's get ready smash some bases with super archers but i feel like the biggest the first question should be why are super archers a thing what has changed? Well, two things. First of all, the new level for archers, which means super archers got a new level because of that as well. The next thing is, which is really crucial, is you have to not think about at least already one of the spell towers. If there's an invisibility spell tower inside the base, you don't care. You do not care at all, because this, those long shots trigger the invisibility towers really early on. It's really crazy. The next thing, Huge shout out to David. David actually shared a couple of attacks, and the main reason why I'm showing showing those instead of doing the attacks on my own is a lot of you were asking if I could share some gameplay of non-max heroes, for example, or at least quite low-level heroes. The majority of my accounts by now are already quite gemmed, as you have seen in the last couple of videos, which means uh, it's tricky for me to show non-max gameplay when it comes down to pets, heroes, and everything. And David so far has not jammed too much. Uh, I mean, his queen is max, but that's mainly because of his magic items he had so far. Um, this means we're using the old pads. If you want to replace some, one thing for sure which works is Diggy on the Royal Champion. The others you can keep kind of like this if you want to. And he's using the, those attacks last year as well. So feel free to do that as well. And as always, the link to this strategy is down below in the description. But now let's go into this first attack while he already did the opener. But now, we want to concentrate on why this is so strong, because take a look at those super archers. They're staying safe, they're staying protected from the queen, from the king, and from the titans. The next thing is, those super archers, the cool thing about them is, their range is pretty similar to the queen. Which means, a lot of the time, they're standing on top of each other, the queen and the archers. Why is that important, you might ask? Well, in a smash attack, you're relying on your healers. Those healers do not only target one specific troop, no, they're healing an area around this troop. Which means if your queen and your archers are on the same space, like on the same tile, on the same spot, everything is getting healed together. Which is pretty OP, it's kinda crazy. So you can really push heavily into the core of the base and the next thing is, with another level of super archers, the eager shots are not as threatening anymore, which was the biggest counter so far in Town of 14. So, with the eagle not being that big of a threat anymore, with the, with the archer already countering a couple of the spell towers really easily and nicely, this is the reason why this strategy is now so good. Since we have that now figured out, we can enjoy the, the end of this attack, but now we should take a look at how should you use this strategy, okay? Because this is the next big topic then of this video. Well, we are enjoying the queen finishing the rest of the base, and the cool thing about this is, the Titans are again getting rid of another weakness of those Super Archers. The Super Archers sometimes are stuck on a Lava Hound for quite some time. Which sometimes is somewhat nice, but especially the Lava Pops are kind of annoying. If the Super Archers are stuck on the Hound, it's nice because the piercing arrows are going to hit anyway everything in the line. Well, Pops, well, if they're shooting into the wrong direction, it's not really that useful. And that's what then those Titans are coming in. But, let's now again rewatch another attack of David and what he's doing. You already saw in the first attack that he's nearly always, or this one at least, always trying to go for the blimp. This is something which he told me, and he's most of the time going for two main targets. It's the Town Hall, or it's the Eagle. On this one, the Town Hall is a bit tricky to reach, okay? That's why he's going for the Eagle. There's two reasons for that. Those buildings are really important, and in addition, those buildings are quite big. Why is that an important thing? With taking down those buildings, you can always use that for pathing. Which means, if you're taking down the eagle, you're already creating a natural pathing now into the core of the base. 
where a lot of those other strategies are really having a lot of problems. Like if you would do the same thing with for example the titan smash, like just let your titans and the healers, no really support of other troops behind, you will figure out that it's kind of like a big problem of just sending everything into the core. But with those super archers it's different, because again we have just already said what their strength is, but now let's take a look at this. Warn ability early, protect everything, protecting them especially versus the damage of the monolith. Next thing out, take a look at how they're handling the town hall. Taking down the town hall in nice freeze, make sure that the hound is staying behind the town hall, the town hall is going down first. And now those super archers are stuck for quite some time. Which in this case is a really good thing because you will see they will never get into the range of the poison of the town hall. Which is crucial because otherwise they're staying out of range of danger. And again you can see they're stacking up on perfectly on top of each other with the queen. Which means the healing is kind of endless and those troops are just not dying. So super archers got more tanky. A lot of counters are not as much of a big threat anymore. And overall they're just pretty good against the current meta. This is the next thing as well, which we want to take a look at again, is what is the strength of the super archers, which means their range. A lot of bases are built to deny value regarding and based on the range of the queen. The problem though is they had like the super archers have a higher range than the queen, which we can see perfectly in some of those examples. This one is going to be again a huge overkill, like this is really completely smashed. And the attack is somewhat still simple. So if, you're li li if you like the new ground meta, and if you're thinking about using any of those strategies, Super Archers might be the fit for you. But let's take a look at another base. And so far at the moment, a lot of people like to switch to back to box bases. They were really popular before Town of 15, and they're still really popular now. Again, let's take a look at this base. So he has again two options, Eagle or the Town Hall. Blimp is always a nice thing. For this one, yeah, it's really hard to blimp the eagle, so the choices are not as great anymore. It's just the town hall. Those blimps with the e um, with the with the siege machine, though, it's quite simple because you have two yetis inside and th uh, three sneaky goblins, which means the town hall is going down quite quick. It's not that big of a problem. He's going to rage to just make sure, but again, because such a big building is taken care of, this means that the queen is having a nice and easy way into a certain direction. And that's exactly what he's using on this one again. So he has blimped his target and now he's starting on the flank. The exact same approach as in the first or in the second attack. So this is always what he's going for. This is like his routine if you want to call it like that. Next thing, charging the flank. Again as well, you can always add the warden really early. This is an important thing because it just speeds up your attack. It's less likely that you're going to time fail. Now, second wall break to get that queen even further in with the warden together. And then using the king again for the funneling. He is using two witches as well. Witches mainly are getting used for, for the, I would say, the, the speed up for cleanup, which is always nice. And that's exactly the thing what you're going to do on here as well. Then as soon as the queen is charging in, titans in, a couple of loons in for making sure that the um, healers are staying safe, the super archers. And then the warden ability, as soon as you see, okay, my troops are having a bit of problems with like the monolith, with the eagle, and so on. So he's just now jumping into the core, and again, we can perfectly see where the problem as a base builder is. For example, let's take a look at this Inferno Tower. This Inferno Tower, the multi Inferno Tower on the top right, is out of range of the queen, but super archers can just super easily reach it. And this makes it so hard as a base builder to defend this strategy. Because you wouldn't really completely need to redesign every single base, which is, to be honest, not really realistic. I mean, that is not even close to being there. But now let's take a look at the next thing. We have now the queen struggling to get to the back end. What are the super archers doing? Well, they're taking the jump and they can actually reach the scatter. The scatter is by far out of range of that queen, but the super archers can just easily take her down and reach it and everything is fine. Again, another nice 3 shot from David. Huge shout out to him, as I said already, uh, for sharing those attacks. And I really hope I was able to give you a couple of a quick guide on how to use those super archers, smashes, and attacks in general. If you're struggling right now in Legends or overall with Town of 15, this might be a strategy you want to pick up. And as I said, if you're having already a pretty good upgraded offense and 
have spent probably some gems on, on offers and everything, well, then you might want to use as pets the Diggy on the Royal Champ because it's just OP for ground attacks. I think even the level 1 Diggy is already good enough to use to be used in one of those attacks. But overall, I, I hope it was uh, helpful to watch this. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys back tomorrow with the next video. Until then, see ya and bye-bye.